Greetings everyone! Now we will discuss change programs relating to interpersonal relations and group dynamics. So the learning objectives of this topic is to determine the human process interventions aimed at interpersonal and group process approaches understand the application and effectiveness of various process interventions in producing change, illustrate the principles of the process consultation intervention, describe the process of third-party conflict resolution, and lastly, to discuss and evaluate the core organization development intervention of team building. There are three types of human process intervention, specifically in interpersonal and group process approach, that can be chosen based on the company's current situation and what the change is meant to achieve. So, it in interpersonal and group process interventions, it involves process consultation, third-party intervention, and team building. So before we discuss these types of interventions, let me share to you the definition of OD interventions or also known as the process interventions. According to Robert Zawaki, OD intervention is a sequence of activities, actions, and events intended to help the organization improve its performance and effectiveness. So, dito po sa process interventions, it is a set of activities na possible makatulong sa mga employee para mas maintindihan nila yung isa't isa, mas maging aware sila sa kung anong situation meron sa kumpanya nila. Sabi nga po, kung sa bahay pa lang mismo or sa family natin mismo, iba-iba na ng behavior, beliefs, or even new skills and abilities na meron tayo. So, what more kapag nasa isang company na? Iba-iba yan ang pinanggagali, pinanggalingan ng pamilya. So, it means na iba't iba din yan ang culture na pinaniniwalaan. Sabi nga, employees are the heart and soul of the company. So, unang-una sila ang dapat na mas inaalagaan. Sila ang mas dapat na tinututukan kasi sila yung araw-araw na kumikilo sa loob ng kumpanya. Kaya kung weak ang manpower, possible na bababa ang level of work performance or level of performance na isang organization. So the purpose of process interventions focuses on changing how groups and individuals relate in the organization, assisting the members of the organization to better themselves and each other, working efficiently and effectively as a team. So, ito pong topic na to, ito yung mga strategy na ginagamit ng mga OD practitioner, whether managers or OD professionals. One family, one team sila, nasa loob ng isang kumpanya. So, mas malaki yung time na ginugugol nila na magkakasama sila. Mas malaki yung time na nasa trabaho sila. Kaya dapat the more na mas matagal sila magkakasama, the more din sila na nag improve sa isa't isa for the fast growth of the company. Or para mas mapabilis mismo yung pag-achieve nila sa goals and objectives ng company. So, let's move on to the process consultation. What is process consultation? It is a general framework for carrying out the helping relationships. According to Edgar Exchange, it is as the creation of a relationship that permits the client to perceive, understand, and act on the process events that occur in internal and external environment in order to improve the situation. It means that process consultant does not offer expert help in the form of solution to problems, as in the doctor-patient model. Rather, the process consultant works to help managers, employers, and group access and improve human process such as communication, interpersonal relations, decision-making, and task performance. As a philosophy of helping in relationships, exchange pro proposes 10 principles to guide the process consultant's action, such as always try to be helpful, always stay in touch with current reality, access your ignorance, all acts are interventions, clients own the problem and the solution, Grow with the flow. Timing is crucial. 
Be constructively opportunistic with confrontive interventions. Every day is data, your own of errors particularly, and when in doubt, share the problem. It explains that the 10 principles are clearly departure from a rationalist or objective consulting thinking where one might conceive the consultant as a guru problems that always capable of utilizing a novel insight to successfully crack problems. This is evident in almost all principles, particularly in number 3, 9, and 10. The consultant can hear, but this risk should be minimized if the principle, principles of process consultation are adhered to as they are aimed to work towards the right solution steadily. There are five major processes of consultation. The first one is communication. We all know that communication is ex exchanging thoughts and feelings. It can be overt and covert. Overt is communication through body language, facial expression, and etc. While covert is hidden and the best way to make the message more explicit. Number two, functional roles of group members. The process consultant must be keenly aware of different roles individual in a group. The third one is group problem solving and decision making. Process consultant can help the group understand how it makes decisions and consequences of each decision process, as well as help diagnose which decisions must be effective in the situation. The fourth one is group norms. By understanding its norms and recognize what is helpful, the group can grow and learn from experience. And lastly, the use of leadership and authority. The process consultant needs to understand process involves leadership so that the consultant can help the leader to adjust his style to fit the situation. Here is the basic process intervention. Yung una ay individual intervention. It helps people be more effective in the communication with others. Ang example dito ay yung Johari window. Yung Johari window ay may apat na side. Una muna ay known to self, sunod, not known to others, and not known to self, and unknown. Yung known to self ay tinatawag na open area. Ito yung alam ko at alam ng iba tungkol sa akin. Halimbawa, alam na nating parehas na mabait ako, maganda ako, charlotte. Tapos din naman sa not known to others ay I know but you don't. Ito yung mga 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 information ako lang nakakaalam na. Tsaka halimbawa na lang dito ay mga private issues, saan ba ako sobrang natatakot, ganun. Tapos din naman sa not known to self, alam ng iba pero hindi ko alam. Nalaman ko lang through feedback ng iba na in-inform na ako na, na short-tempered ko pala, ganito, ganyan. Tapos doon naman sa at unknown, I don't know and you don't know. Ito yung discoveries ko pa lang. Tapos halimbawa na lang, tinanong mo ako ng gusto ko ba ng sushi pero hindi ko pa natatry. Malalaman ko lang yun kapag natry ko na. Tapos ang last nila naman doon sa basic process intervention ay yung group intervention. It aim at the process, content, structure of the group. So, next is third-party intervention. So, alamin muna natin, ano nga ba yung third-party intervention? So, based on my research, third-party intervention is an involvement of person or team into ongoing conflict of two parties like management and union to resolve conflict. It is also very considerably depending on the kind of issues underlying the conflict. So, dito sa third party intervention, involvement siya ng isang tao or ng isang grupo kung saan nagkakaroon ng conflict or ng disagreement. Dito, tinutulungan sila on how they can resolve the conflict in a beneficial way. Dito din is tinutulungan sila paano ba nila imamanage yung action and to imply to them na ano ba yung kalalabasan ng bawat action nila pag hindi nila masyadong pinag-iisipan. Next is why do conflict arise? So conflict arise because of differences in personality, task orientation, goal interdependence, and perception. Dito sa conflict arise is maybe the resolution is to find a peaceful solution to a disagreement. 
kailangan lang din dito is a communication. Kasi minsan sa conflict, ang pinaka-main problem dyan is na may misunderstand ng iba yung gusto mong sabihin. Kaya nagkaka-conflict is lack of communication. Next is the cyclical model of conflict. So, dito kung makikita natin, umiikot lang siya sa tatlo, which is the issue, behavior, and consequence. Regarding dito, kailangan lang niya ng training para i-improve yung behavior and consequence. Makikita dito yung before and after para makita natin kung nag-improve ba or nakatulong ba yung training. Next is the pros and cons of conflict. Ang pros conflict is earlier problem identification, better problem solving, healthy relationship, moral and commitment, improved productivity, personal growth, and insight. Dito sa pros conflict, ito ay parang mas nagiging much better tayo and nade-develop yung sarili natin. And, kumbaga, kung dati mahina tayo, ngayon, malakas na. So, sa cons conflict naman, meron niyang mental health concern, a decrease in productivity, member deep organization, violence, disrupt primary purposes, and psychological problem. Dito sa cons conflict, madami siyang naa-apektuhan. Nandiyan na yung mental health natin or mapa-psychological yan. In, minsan yung purpose natin sa buhay, nakakalimutan natin dahil sa conflict, nandidistract tayo masyado na yung, kumbaga, ito yung goal natin. Pero dahil sa conflict, nawawala yun sa isip natin. Next is the last, strategies for conflict resolution. Meron tayong apat na strategies. Ang una is prevent the ignition of conflict. So dito, kailangan mo lang makipag-communicate respectfully and positive. Think positive. Iwasan mo ang maging negative. Kasi yung negative, yun yung nagpapadaw sa'yo. Lagi ka lang dito ka sa goal mo. Isipin mo yun. So, pangalawa is to set limits on the form of the conflict. Dito, kailangan mo mag-focus sa sarili mo, even sa trabaho mo. Lagi mong alalahanin yung future mo. So, pangatlo is help the parties differently with the consequence of the conflict. Dito, kung paano mo na-cope up yung conflict, you do share. Share to others on how you cope that conflict. Makakatulong din yun sa iba. So, uh, paano mo na-resolve yun? I-share mo. So, four is attempt to eliminate or to resolve the basic issues using cause conflict. So, dito, kumbaga, try and try. Mag-isip ka na mag-isip ng mga bagay na kung paano mo malalagpasan yung isang bagay. Now, let's discuss team building. Team building refers to a broad range of plan activities that help groups improve the way they accomplish tasks, help members enhance their interpersonal and problem-solving skills, and increase team performance. So, in an organization, these variables are really important. It is the way of improving and changing the environment among co-workers so they can perform their job better. Team building is literally building relationship, building trust, and cooperation that should be practiced inside the organization. So, before we go to the team building activities, let us first define team. So, what is team? A team is a group of interdependent people who share a common purpose, have common work methods, and hold each other accountable. They share common purpose, goal, and that is why they are in such team. They depend to each other in order to achieve that, and for the development of the organization. There are six different types of team. First one is functional work team. In this work team, all the members belong to the same functional area and respond to a single manager who is responsible for the management of the whole group. For example, is the HR management. 
HR manager is the one who's responsible to them and the one who holds the whole team. Next one is interworking team. In this case, the work team is made up of the members from different areas of activity and its members usually have the same hierarchical level. Third one is troubleshooting team. Organizations employ this team usually to improve processes to find out how to solve the problems that are harming them. Next is self-managed teams. There are groups of employees who work in an extremely integrated and collaborative way because they don't have a formal leader. Next one is project team. These are work groups an organization creates to implement a specific project until completion. Afterward, the group dissolves as it achieves its objectives. Last one is the TART task force team. This is one of the most interesting types of work teams. They only form when emergency situations emerge which the organization need to solve. So next is the team building activities. Team building activities can be used by any business, large or small, to promote better teamwork in the workplace. And as most business owners and managers know, great teamwork is one of the key factors associated with the company's success. So team building activity is classified into four main types. First one is communication activities. With this kind of activities, sharing ideas and opinion will be much easier for the employee. Mas magiging comfortable yung employee if they are already practicing communicating and sharing thoughts with each other. Next one is problem solving or decision making activities. So in this type of activity, the member of the organization will practice agile mindset or mabilis makapag-isip ng solutions kapag nagkaroon na bigla ang problema. And they are weighing or tinitimbang nila yung mga possible outcomes for every decisions. Third one is adaptability and planning activities. Of course, in an organization, most of the time, you will working with your co-workers or you're in a group. And adaptability is one way para maging comfortable ka to work with them at ganun din yung mga planning related activities. And last one is the activities that focus on building trust. These activities, syempre, dapat you trust the person you are working with. So you can collaborate everyone's ideas without hesitating kung tama ba ang mali o mali yung mga ideas na yun. So, team building is really important because after completing team building activities together, employees better understand each other's strengths, weaknesses, and interests. This understanding help them work even better together on the future progress vital to a company and a team will be able to reach its collective potential as well. The results of team building. Let us talk first the advantages of team building. When team building is done right, it can increase the self-esteem of the employees, especially if useful for people who may find it difficult to others, which in turn can increase the efficiency of their work and also their understanding as communication become better. Second, team building can also help to reduce employees' stress levels in the workplace, which will keep staff members happier and if people are happy, they are generally more active. Third, the team may even unite better to tackle common goals and problems that need solving and meaning obstacles are overcome much faster and targets are met or maybe even exceeded. Disadvantages First, employees may get behind on work and have to work harder to catch up which can cause stress and irritation that could possibly even undo what the exercises so to achieve. Second, causes a big factor to businesses who take their employees for team building exercises. The cost is not necessarily the cost of activities, but rather the cost of time that could spend working and making money back at the office or workplace. Lastly, team building may not work all the time. Everybody is different and not everybody shares the same interests and opinions as others, even if they work in the same industry. The manager's role in team building. The manager is responsible for team functioning. However, many managers have not been trained to perform the data gathering, diagnosis, planning, and action necessary to maintain and improve their teams. That is why OD consultant is hired to work closely with the manager and the members of the team. Assuming that the manager wants and needs a consultant, the two should work together in developing the initial program. 
keeping in mind that the manager ultimately responsible for all team building activities and the goal of consultant's presence is to help the manager learn to continue team development processes with minimum consultant help or without the outgoing help of the consultant. Thus, in the first stage, the consultant might be much more active in data gathering, diagnosis, and action planning. In later stage, the consultant takes much less active while the manager is more active and serving as both manager and team developer. In addition, the manager responsible for team building must be able to find out the strength and weaknesses of the team members and create a right mix of people with different skill sets. He must focus on developing strong interpersonal relations and trust among their team members. Besides, the manager must encourage communication and interaction among their team members.